Dr. Greg Tuttle will be our speaker tonight, and he will be discussing air-driven versus electric dental hand pieces. Before we get started, I do have a few reminders for you. If you have a question, please type it into the box labeled, have a question, and we will answer them live at the end. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by Dent Supply Serona. Dr. Tuttle, welcome and thank you for being with us tonight. I'll pass it on over to you now. All right, hey, thank you so much. Thank Henry Schein for hosting me at Dent Supply Serona. Um, sorry you guys don't get any CAE for this, but uh, hopefully um, this is for you and I can help you out if you try to decide on what you want to do between air-driven and electric hand pieces. Um, our learning objectives tonight, uh, we're going to talk about the differences in the hand pieces. I'm going to show you an efficient crown prep uh, model that I use. Uh, we're going to <clears throat> talk about uh, some incidents that can happen uh, with the hand pieces and some of the pros and cons of each. And I'll show you a few cases and moving onward. Uh, just so you know, I'm a general dentist. I practice. I did practice five days a week till recently. I had a practice in Utah and California, California for 30 years. I'm a private practicing dentist. Uh, when, I, when my son graduated in 2015, I was hit really hard with his uh, graduation ceremony that talked about the oath to pass on to other dentists uh, important things and uh, insights. And I'm here today in response to that oath and that and that uh, promise that I made at my graduation, which was resurrected when my son was uh, graduating. Um, uh, so I'm right in the trenches with you. I'm not a uh, professional educator. Um, I am a practicing dentist and I practice comprehensive care uh, every day. Um, other disclosures, uh, Things that I have spoken on are uh, intraosseous anesthesia. Um, I have a patent with that. Some of you might know me from that. Um, Henry Schein was sponsoring this event with Dense Wise Serona and um, no other commercial affiliations. Um, so we'll just kind of jump right into it. So we have a responsibility as dentists to do no harm to the tooth and the patient. And sometimes we're doing harm and we don't even know it. Um, I will show you some examples of things that can happen. And so let's use that as our basis to try to make wise decisions on how to practice dentistry. Um, when I was in junior high school, we had wood shop and I noticed that when the blade got clogged or dull and I tried to cut a piece of wood, it almost catch on fire. You've got smoke and I'd look at the end of the board and it was burnt. And I was like, wow, what's the smoke coming from? And I realized the blade was dull or the blade was dirty and it burnt the wood. And so that can happen. I learned about uh, precision, efficiency, uh, maybe a new blade, sharper blade, a cleaner blade would help that wood not burn. And we all know as a dentist, uh, we really don't want to burn the tooth. Uh, that's not a healthy thing for it. Um, so. Some of the takeaways from today, uh, we're going to talk about quality in burrs and uh, hand pieces. How zirconia has really changed everything uh, for me. And um, I'm going to make a case for electric hand pieces being superior to air driven. But uh, we'll talk about some of those common accidents. But also, it boils down to feel and preference and uh, some people base it on feel or preference or cost. And why why I actually late in my career made the change to electrics and what it, what that was based on. Um, my history was at a school, uh, you're issued a handpiece and you take that with you to practice and you're so excited because it's a really nice handpiece we got at University of Nebraska back in 1990. And I take that into my practice and the guy goes, oh no, you know, we're gonna be working out of a couple chairs and you gotta use what we have here. And uh, so I, I had this really nice hand piece with the light and the swivel and everything on it. And I just really had a decision right there from the owner that as an associate, I wouldn't be using that hand piece. So I was stuck with 
uh, his old old hand pieces and uh, we can talk about that more. So sometimes you don't use uh, what you learn in school and you need to go uh, by feel. These are some of the other points that we're covering here. Um, let's just move right along. <clears throat> um, so um, the hand piece that my uh, associate Dennis gave me, uh, the owner, he gave me one that had a larger head. I couldn't get it back there on, on upper second molars. Um, I had limited access. I really struggled with it. It didn't have a swivel, so I was tang uh, struggling with the hoses, uh, getting tangled up, and uh, the bearings would seize or it would freeze. Um, I had burr issues where uh, the burr would get stuck in or the burr would, you go to prep and the burr would just fall out. And uh, I just struggled with uh, some of those early th things early on. Um, so I knew I wanted to change to fiber optic lighted, uh, light touch, swiveling handpiece out of necessity, and, and the size of the burr head, uh, the drill head was important to me, handpiece. Um, my later frustrations were after practicing for 20 years or so, uh, and along came zirconia and really ch changed everything. I had these old uh, handpieces from acquiring this practice, and I would just start prepping on a tooth and I'd say, trying to cut off zirconia or something, I'd say, oh, this handpiece, give me a new handpiece. Oh, give me a new burr. Oh, give me a new handpiece. And I would just uh, get spoiled by something that cut efficiently. And some of those uh, handpieces were around for many years, but I just had a pile in the, in the back room of all the handpieces that were bagged and what was the problem written on it. Wouldn't grip the burr. Uh, wimpy, uh, the latch is stuck, the bearings are froze, whatever. Um, so for years, I enjoyed a reasonable uh, lifespan of these hand pieces. This is the old Quiet Air Midwest, and it's the workhorse, and a lot of you are still using it today, and those things last forever. But, but uh, what happened was, um, with the zirconia now, and with my repairs and the bearings that I kept going through, um, it was time to change something up. Uh, along came bonded ceramics and zirconia and sectioning bridges and crown removal uh, really wasn't what it was before. Um, my hand pieces uh, wailed and whined and I didn't get nearly the mileage that I wanted to out of my bearings. Um, I didn't want to change them all. It, cost, it seemed too steep to go and try and change all my hand pieces. Um, and, and literally my handpiece repair company uh, refused to repair them. He said they're warped, you need to replace some. So uh, I was a little ticked about that. And I was like, man, I'm farther along in my career. I really don't want to change. But this zirconia now is, is just kicking, kicking us and we've got to have something uh, that, that works better. Um, so I knew it was time to change handpieces or just explore some other options because it was getting too expensive for me and uh, it wasn't uh, performing what I needed to have done. I knew the feel was important. The way that hand piece fit in my hand piece is almost like a, a someone, a painter or an artist fits a brush. If you had a big bulky brush, he's used to his perfect paintbrush. You can paint better. Uh, as a river guide, I was a river guide all the way growing up um, from 16 on. And I'd like the paddle that had the T-handle. And I just would sit in the back of that boat and I'd have that feel. And when you go in and you sit down to prep a tooth and you just have that feel, you just know exactly how that feels in your hands. And that's important to you, especially after you practice uh, 20 years with the same type of handpiece. Um, so to entertain a new handpiece or a thicker handle uh, was something I wasn't interested in. Um, but then along came uh, one of my reps and he said, let's do a demo. He, so he just installed one in my second operatory and he's like, you just try it out, you know, for a month, see how you like it. And he just came and installed it and right alongside my other handpiece. So I didn't have to give up my handpiece. I didn't have to commit to purchasing. He just installed it. And that was really nice of him to do. And so I had it in there. So I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a composite. I don't want that handpiece. I'm doing this. Yeah, but then I'd say, okay, I've got six crown preps to prep. And that thing cuts way fast. And so... I found myself gravitating more toward it, 
And I ended up learning a lot, and that's what I'm gonna share with you, some of the things that I learned in the comparisons of having one side by side with my handpiece. And, um, and it took me about a month before, I'd say, uh, before I wanted to do everything uh, with that new electric handpiece. Um, yeah, the old school, if you have any of these, you know, you know that if you lose one of these, I lost one one time and the owner told me how much one of these bird keys cost, but the new push buttons are just far superior to any latch or any kind of bird key. So that's a lot of the old, old school systems. Um, if you go with side by side comparison, uh, you can find these all over. We won't spend a lot of time on them, but, um, the air driven, uh, above 350 a thousand, it's 350,000 RPMs and electric is a consistent uh, 200,000. Um, I like how the electric does not bog down with pressure. Um, and it's, um, they say larger and heavier, but they've got some pretty light ones out now. Uh, there is less of a shrill, the high pitch sound uh, with the electric. And uh, I find the kids do better with the not so much high sound as that that old quiet air head. Um, but those are so, a quick snapshot of, I do find it more durable too with the type of dentistry that we're doing nowadays. And um, there's the side-by-side -side comparison. Let's see. Okay. Whoa. Just uh, grab something else here. Sorry, okay. Um, another thing that I noticed that it wasn't even a sales pitch for it, but uh, the port. If you have one port on the front of my old handpiece, and then the new ones had four, they had four uh, ports. And so it was able to cool the tooth better because I found that if I was prepping uh, closer to the assistant away from my, my side, that uh, the tooth would heat up and burn sometimes. And so uh, the water is blocked when you're working away from you, so the assistant would have to spray air on the tooth. I found, found it better with the uh, four-port system instead of one port on the handpiece. Another thing um, you, to keep it cool is important because we know that when the diamonds hit metal, there are sparks that occur, and I can uh, we'll talk about at the end uh, some of the problems with that. We've all seen sparks, and we want to minimize the sparks in the mouth. Um, uh, I'm not going to really call out any brands. Um, uh, there are a lot of different brands. I mean, I saw today in one of the catalogs, there were 40 pages of hand piece, hand piece options. And I can't even tell you which swivels better, which one's lighter, which one's, which company, but a lot of companies, uh, make both an air driven and an electric. So that's, that's kind of good to know. Um, so it depends on your kind of practice on what you want the handpiece to do for you. Um, for me, I like working fast and, uh, I do multiple preps. And so, uh, the efficiency is what I'm, I'm after. Um, obviously, um, the tougher treatments as far as cutting off zirconia and bridges, uh, if you have a full mouth of, of those to do, uh, efficiency is important. Um, but then some of the delicate things, like even polishing a composite, I found that I found a couple things. If you're polishing with the 7901 with the high speed um, burr, I found I got more uses out of my 7901 with an air driven. That's funny to, to think about that, that I got more uses uh out of it and i and i uh, got less less uses out of a brownie um we're going to talk about this a little bit later the non-concentric wobbly air driven handpiece gouges a composite so you can get more use out of a dull burr uh with the the air driven that maybe isn't as concentric and uh it's causing some hammering um with the electric i found that i got um I, I got less use out of my 7901 with the electric because it was so concentric that I, I required a sharp burr every time. Um, so that was an interesting uh, comparison. But I did get more 
uses out of a brownie with the electric because it was concentric. I didn't burn out my brownies as fast. And I had a slower speed uh, so that it, I didn't burn through them. So, and it was safer. I didn't have chunks of uh, the brownie flying around in the mouth. And it was a more controlled speed because you can adjust the speed of the, of the handpiece um, and have it consistent instead of trying to do it with your foot pedal. Um, the bigger the case, the better the handpiece needs to be. You can't have things stalling out. You, you've got to be able to cut and do what you need to do. Uh, this is a case I did full uppers and lowers all at the same time. And uh, it just, uh, the, the uh, cutting efficiency, I'm doing things now that I never could do before. I would have had to do in multiple appointments and I can do them in one appointment. You can see how we had to open the bite there and we had to, uh, be pretty careful and delicate around the gingiva uh, with knife edge margins, uh, 0.3 millimeters sub, sub gingival to get enough grab to make those crowns stay on. <clears throat> um, the efficiency allows you to uh, work faster uh, without them coming I mean, unnumb. And this is a, that's a temporary that's broken right there. But um, uh, a lot of people want instant ortho um, or crowns. Um, with the newer products that we have, we can prep and we can do some instant. I, not everyone might agree with this, but uh, you, know, you get a 75 year old that wants instantly white straight teeth. He's going on a cruise. And uh, so we just uh, do some proximal separations. We do a 360 veneer around the whole tooth. Uh, and uh, provide them with a great service. But before uh, air driven, when I had air driven, I, I didn't even think of these things sometimes. Replacing all these crowns, these PFMs all at once. Uh, when we used to cut gold off, it was really quick and simple. You just uh, score it and pry it and it comes right off. Then PFMs were a little harder to cut off. And now if you have to cut off bonded zirconia, uh, good luck. You gotta have you, that forced me into um, electric camp pieces and and quality burrs and single use burrs. Um, here's some other work uh, that I've done. Uh, today was a 16 crown placement day. I had to adjust a lot on the size of length on the other anteriors, and I was glad I had uh, the electric camp piece that I had to, to do that. Um, I'm going to discuss just a, this how I do a crown prep. Uh, there's Detala's reverse crown prep, which inspired me. We've got uh, Omar Reed uh, back in the 70s or 60s, uh, his crown prep techniques. Uh, this is one that just I've adopted. And these are the pretty much the four burrs I use, and I'll just bump through those really quick for you. Um, Clusal reduction with a football. Um, and then uh, axial reduction as well. I go at, at the gingival margin. Uh, I'll cut through my proximal slice, a nice hand piece and a good burr will boom, paint through that one, one slice right through the proximal is what you're hoping to. And then you just have to blend those uh, line angles, uh, do some margin refinement uh, with the cylinder. So um, these, Larger uh, double cone burrs, uh, they're a little larger than the football, a little more radical reduction. Uh, they're a little precarious for me. Um, I worry about the end breaking off, and I'll show you one of those cases uh, um, later on. Um, but I use the football rather than the double cone, even though the double cone is a little more aggressive <clears throat> and efficient. Um, so we'll do our proximal slice uh, with a flame-shaped diamond. Uh, Establishing margins with the pointed cylinder. That's I call that one old faithful. Uh, I like a super course on that. I'll give you some, you can take a quick screenshot of that or whatever. Uh, old faithful is what I use right there. And uh, those are the burrs I use and um, for every crown prep. You know, you'll get out of school and you think, oh, I'm just going to use one burr and do the whole thing. Um, I've learned more and more once you're out you go back to the things in the proper way that you were taught in school and it makes you more efficient and you let the bird judge depth you let the bird judge uh what you're going to do and that's my basic setup right there on my bird block <clears throat> um 
I also like these flex tabs to check your clearance. Uh, that's another thing. Uh, a lot of new dentists don't clear, don't provide adequate clearance. Uh, when my lab man sent me one of these, I said, yeah, thanks. I got the hint. Uh, I wasn't giving him enough clearance. So I'd pick you up a flex, flex tabs and I'd use those every single case because you can't really tell when, when you have clearance or not. Um, so let's talk about quality. Um, McDonald's makes one of the highest quality hamburgers in the world. Uh, agree or disagree? Well, I probably disagree on one regard, but as far as business, the definition, business definition, quality means reliable uh, consistency. So, so outside of the pickle being kind of to the side or whatever, the bun is the same, the, the burger's the same, uh, the ketchup and mustard amounts, everything is so identical, whether you go to a McDonald's in Europe or Kentucky or Minnesota. Uh, and so it's a, it's a, a from business def definition, a McDonald's hamburger is extremely high quality uh, product, believe it or not, because it's reliable consistency. No matter where you go, it's always the same. So the answer, yes, they do. But as far as uh, the $12 burger, sometimes they didn't cook it enough in the center. Uh, it's hit or miss on if the bun's stale or not. Uh, the temperature and so you get my point so what we need is reliable consistency uh, out of our dental products uh, because uh, there's price wars um, and um, you can have diamonds peeling off you can have a uh, green market you can online you can buy just about anything uh, cheaper uh, but i think you uh, those can cost you uh, in the long run have you ever pulled a burr out and the thing's bent you know a bent burr it just, you know, uh, quality, and we need to hold these companies to good quality. Um, um, so reliable consistency in the handpiece, you know, does the light work or is it sporadic? Uh, does the water flow, rotation speed and torque? Does it grab the burr and release uh, when it needs to? Uh, run out, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then a lifespan, is there a reasonable lifespan? And I've found that the more I use newer burrs and the, with quality handpiece, uh, I get more of a lifespan. Um, I hear of people uh, talking about, let's see, uh, let's talk about some of the common frustrations with burrs and handpieces. Uh, let's talk about the run out. Um, so run out, you put, you, you've got the, you're in the hygiene room and you stick a slow speed on there to adjust a denture or something. And some of those hand pieces are, are just not high quality on the slow speeds. You put that burr in. So the farther the burr sticks out, the more uh, burr whip you'll have or the lack of concentricity or centricity of the burr. Um, you'll get wobble or collar wobble. Um, it's magnified at the end. Um, um, so imbalanced cut and it's a it's a disagreeable vibration it's really hard on the handpiece so you have to change something the burr's got to be shorter it's got to be not such a big head um and it leads to chattering or shattering instead of uh, cutting so <clears throat> you got to worry a lot about incisal edges around crowns with a high speed i know i have a slow speed listed here but we're gonna we're gonna talk about that um, so there's, uh, this was posted as kind of interesting, uh, the burr head diameter, the bigger the burr head or the length, uh, recommended working speeds depending on those length. Um, so uh, the concept being the more concentric you are, the more centered, the less wobble. Uh, professional ice skaters know all about that. Um, the next thing to think about is is uh, side load, how much you're pushing on the tooth to get it to cut. So when I had those old hand pieces and they were failing and my bearings were seizing, what happened was I started leaning on them and I started like pushing, I was like really leaning on it and it still wouldn't cut. I almost like felt myself sawing it back and forth, like chop, 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 like sawing a piece of wood, like come on, come on, come on. Give me a new burr, give me a new burr, give me a new handpiece. 
and it was really frustrating. But uh, leaning, once you get an electric and you start leaning on it too heavily, you know, you'll see uh, instantly a uh, thing turns volcanic on you, basically, or uh, the uh, metal on the burr turns bright red, and you're like, whoa, that wasn't good, or the diamonds peel off. So uh, we cannot uh, function under excessive side load, especially if we're uh, cutting porcelain is one thing, but cutting on the tooth and having excessive side load is not good. Uh, so using a fresh burr, a, a sterile burr, and single use recommended, and uh, you have nice control dynamics for that reliable consistency or quality dentistry that you want to perform. Uh, old clogged up burrs, uh, yeah, you might think it's saving you using it the next time, but, but sometimes it just costs you. Um, uh, a dental repair uh, gave his advice, and he said, uh, sharp burrs for the electrics, please fully insert the burr once you once you uh, have it come out. You can use some uh, extended length burrs, uh, like surgical length burrs, um, instead of just trying to get the burr to go part way out uh, or extending it. Uh, it's it's harder on the handpiece, and you'll see more repairs if you're you're trying to adjust the length uh, without adjusting the burr size. Um, <clears throat> So um, on an electric handpiece, when it is worn or fatigued it, and it needs repair, it will heat up. Air handpieces just, uh, they jam up or they stall or they won't spin. And so um, clogged or damaged electric handpieces, uh, send, it, it senses that it's not spinning as fast and the it will send more power to the handpiece head uh, to, to obtain the same performance. And so they uh, will heat up and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And here, but here, let's talk through a few uh, scenarios here. Um, you have an air-driven handpiece, you're removing a crown and the carbide burr breaks instantly. So what's what's da what's going on? Is it the burr? Is it the handpiece? Is it the technique? Is it too much force? The uh, side force? Um, you have to try to figure that figure that out. Um, you have an air driven uh, handpiece again, and you're removing a zirconia crown with great difficulty. Is it the burr? Every every supplier comes up with uh, well, this is the burr to remove. This is the special burr to remove zirconia. So I'd keep them in a drawer. I'd say, get me that special burr that that supply guy got out for me to remove zirconia. This thing does it every time. I go in, I lean on it, boom, and the, and the thing would disintegrate, uh, or it didn't give me the performance that I wanted. Some have, some haven't, and I thought it was my uh, the burr, but then I decided it was it was the air driven that was the issue. Um, and uh, if you can go with a light touch, that's one key indicator that your uh, you're able to uh, accomplish the task that you need to do. Um, if you have an electric handpiece and you're removing zirconia, uh, the diamonds strip off, is it a cheap burr? Am I leaning too hard? So you get the point. Um, so, uh, or if, if either handpiece burns the tooth during the prep, so what is it? Do I need to use a new burr because that old burr is like that old uh, blade in the wood shop from junior high? Is it just burning the tooth because the, the blade is dull or it's clogged? Um, or is the handpiece, I'm, I'm uh, just uh, leaning on it too hard or what is it? Um, so uh, new burrs and quality handpiece and electric will help you uh, have more quality and consistency in the heat generated on the tooth. Um, you know, when I was considering um, switching hand pieces, I went through uh, on Dental Town and some of these places to try to see what are guys buying, what are what are they doing, what brands, what what works. And then I started to read about all these stories about. <laughs> here's some I put a quote. You know, like uh, 
cheap eBay China handpiece will come apart unless you tighten the hell out of them when they when they arrive. I I do, uh, and then so they're talking about the entire chuck assembly falling out in the patient's mouth, and uh, people try to go cheap, try to get around uh, the expense of dentistry, but. Uh, what what is costly is it, it'll cost you more with some headaches that you have. Uh, I had one guy when I when I was talking about it, uh, the uh, six month guarantee on the the Midwest Quiet Air uh, bearings, and he goes, "You know what I do?" Kind of a slower practice. Like I just use I use this one handpiece for everyone, and what I do is I send it back before the six month. Uh, warranty expires, and they replace my bearings with a new uh, set of set of bearings for free because it's warrantied for six months. I'm like one handpiece, dude. You're cheap, man. Come on, like that. That was not going to work in my practice where I had uh, to work out of multiple chairs and and turn multiple rooms, and I need I need a bunch of handpieces. So his plan was probably cost effective. I don't think it was ethical to me. It's like buying a buying a suit, wearing it to your daughter's wedding and then returning it and returning her dress the day after, you know, it's just, it's cheap. It's unethical. I, I'm not, you know, that's, that's, that's not the way to be. That's not, that's not good business. Um, uh, <clears throat> so that's a question I have for you. Do you trust your handpiece uh, to make adjustments on newly cemented crowns? Obviously, you want to cement. You want to adjust them before you cement. But then you cement, and then you've got to adjust. I tell you, with some of those wobbly, uh, non-concentric, air-driven uh, hand pieces, I and I was adjusting zirconia, or uh, mostly uh, like stacked uh, porcelain on zirconia. And you know, all you need to do is lose one incisal edge after you've cemented this beautiful case. And it, it gets you thinking, like, what did that cost me right there? And now the lab, the lab's ticked, and you're ticked, and the patient's ticked. So that's a bad outcome. But I comfortably, uh, so I cemented 16 units today on somebody, and I could comfortably take my handpiece, uh, football diamond, and go on it because I had adequate thickness, I had adequate reduction, and I had adequate uh, uh so I could, I could do that. So can you do that? I mean, if not, you're going to use a disc, you're going to use a wheel, something else to adjust. But uh, that's a true test of, of gutsy adjustments um, with the high-speed handpiece. Um, here's a case. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, you go to adjust, and, and this burr breaks, and... Uh, when that happens, how do you get the burr shank out of the handpiece? Um, I've sent those in for repairs. I've also just got desperate and uh, pushed the button in and pounded on the counter to try to get that thing out. Uh, try to stick an endo file in there, and, and most repair guys, no, 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 just send it in. But I have uh, had some success with pushing the button and tapping a little bit and not going crazy on it. And using more quality burrs and single use. So that's why I don't use that shape burr ever. I think there's just too much risk of that thing flying off and breaking uh, during preps. And I don't want that thing flying around the mouth at 200,000 RPMs. Uh, this is a story a guy wrote, wrote in. He said, I was prepping crown number 20 with a brand new burr. Didn't even touch the tooth. And the burr shank literally snapped off at the neck. The head of the burr was a projectile which snapped off tooth 25. That's never happened to me, but he said, luckily the patient took it well, two crowns and a root canal for free. So all this maybe save a buck or two on a burr, the quality of the burr. Um, once again, quality, uh, we can define that a little bit more on the burr. It's not really the cost of the burr, but it's reliable consistency. If things are breaking like that, you know. So anyways, he wanted to know if any of that's happened to anyone. He called the company and they said, oh, uh, that's never happened before. You know, these things probably go unreported because you're not really going to talk about it. But that's an unfortunate mishap uh, just from uh, a broken burr, either from a bad hand pass or from a bad burr, um, but, you know. You just don't want that to happen. Another thing that can happen, uh, 
We've had some uh, issues. I've heard just freak accidents um, where they're on nitrous. 72 year old woman receives second degree facial burns as a fire ignited during, uh, near the nasal hood supplying nitrous oxide oxygen mixture. And uh, imagine the burn and it was ignited when the high speed handpiece was prepping a titanium post. So we've all had sparks in the mouth, but if you're using nitrous and oxygen, you gotta be careful because uh, things can happen. Um, <clears throat> the motor heating up on the electric handpiece, I've had that before on my implant handpiece when I had electric handpiece for endo and implants. I haven't had that sense with my newer handpiece. Maybe they've addressed it, maybe they've solved it, but uh, um, with an air-driven handpiece, it can wobble and then uh, and then seize. But then, like we said, the failing electric handpiece will heat up. And if you've got gloves on, and you may not even know it until until it's too late, that that handpiece is heating up and burning the patient. <clears throat> um, so you send them in for service if you feel the motor on your electric handpiece heating up. It uh, looks like the FDA sent out some warnings in 07 and 10, and uh, you'll be able to tell or feel that. Um, here's the examples of electric burn. So on the on the left is right after. You might not even know it. You you uh, and then they go home and then they say, "What do you do? Like you cut it with the drill? What do you do?" And uh, that's a typical burn um, that can happen. These are some bad ones. Uh, other ones that are electric hand feeds burns. Uh, the, that upper lip one is just devastating. Uh, some of those lawsuits settle for some high numbers, and we just want to be aware of it and never have that happen. Uh, it's not enough, and it's not so common that it's going to make me not have an electric hand piece because it's the only thing. I can't, I can't practice without it now uh, with today's materials. Um, for you, uh, hopefully some of these things have helped. You got to decide what's right for you, whether it's feel, whether it's cost, whether it's uh, efficiency, um, and uh, what it's costing you uh, to operate. Um, here's a nice top 10. I want to leave some time for some questions, but uh, top 10 reasons uh, of why to use an electric hand piece. Uh, some of that we've talked about. Uh, if I can prep a tooth in seven minutes instead of 30 minutes, uh, that's why I showed that efficient crown prep method, uh, then it's better on my back, it's better on my neck, I can prep and walk away, or I can do multiple preps. Um, so efficiency to me, when the patient becomes unnumb, uh, you're working in a window uh, when the patient's numb and I, need, I like going fast. And I think uh, clean cut is better or the tooth instead of just bogging down and having the, the handpiece stall out on the tooth uh, with a dull burr or a cheap air-driven handpiece. Um, I like the less noise for the children. I like the adjustable speeds control. I like the concentric smoother uh, for preps and for finishing composites. Um, so those are some of my reasons. That's why I switched after 30 years. You'd think, oh man, I'm going to retire in a little bit. Why switch handpiece? Why go to the cost? Uh, man, it's really uh, made me more excited about dentistry. Um, here's some sample questions that have been uh, been sent in. Um, some of these I've already kind of covered uh, later. In, um, but you want? Uh, can I get away with buying cheap burrs from off-market sites? Maybe, maybe not. If you put it in the handpiece and it falls out, um, I like going with reliable um, suppliers, um, so reliable companies, and then they'll back you up. Like if you send them in and say, man, three of these burrs didn't even hold in my, in my drill, uh, in my handpiece, they fell out, they're inconsistent sizes, the, bur the diamond stripped off, the, it imploded just when I turned it on. They're going to back you up. They're going to, and you're going to get uh, some good service from them uh, with those inconsistent sizes or diamonds or, or problems. Um, <clears throat> they can also help you with a demo. Uh, similar to buying a car, you can try out different ones and see if it fits. You know, for some people, they're like, "Oh, I like I like this brand. I like that brand." 
uh, you just put it in your hand and see how it feels. It's like not the same car that is comfortable for everybody. Um, um, I think the electric are more longer lasting and durable considering the jobs that we have to do. Um, anyway, so um, that's, I left us a, a little bit of time for uh, questions. Um, we can type them in or ask them. And um, I kind of buzzed through that pretty quickly. Um, and I, I appreciate your time. But I'm, uh, like I said, I'm in the trenches. I'm with you guys. I'm a full time practicing dentist. I'm here to help you out to make this decision and to, I'm, I haven't named any brands. Um, I have what I use. Um, uh, but you know, funny, funny story is that, uh, since I acquired, I've acquired three different practices that were about 30 years old and acquiring those practices, I, I get their instruments and their hand pieces and things too, when I acquire their practice. But I have the same slow speed hand piece that I got issued in dental school. So I, that is unbelievable. It's, it's, uh, super reliable and it performs well, but it's gotta be a, just a miracle hand piece. So many of you probably have the same, same story, but, um, if you have any questions, um, like I said, I'm, I'm on your side. Uh, you can email TuttleDDS at gmail.com. There's about 400 of you out there. I don't know how many right now, but, uh, hopefully this has been worth your while and, uh, I appreciate your time. And attention. So oh, our guys. first question is to Terry, uh, or is from Terry, who asked, "What is the sterilization process of the electric?" The sterilization uh, follow the manufactured suggestions. That's what I say. Some will sterilize the handpiece top part, but not the motor every time. But there's you're going to need to follow the manufacturer recommendations. The, the bottom motor part for me doesn't go through the top part though. It all goes through. Uh, and I have my assistants that have been with me 10 years. They, they are, it's not a wipe and go. I'll tell you that. I don't, I don't agree with that unless I'm down in uh, a foreign country and I've, I've got one chair and I've got a hundred people to see in an afternoon. So, uh, the demands you use common sense, but you also use the recommendation. So thanks for, that's a good question. And you're going to need to follow the manufacturer's recommendations and your state laws for OSHA um, and compliance. Sure. Uh, our next question is from Ron, who asks, do dentists use electric hand pieces for sectioning teeth? Is that safe? For sectioning teeth? Absolutely. Um, so there's there's the striker, there's the uh, hand, surgical hand pieces, but a lot of uh, dentists use um, electric hand pieces that you can modify the speed and the, the burr uh, to fit. So yes, we section teeth uh, with the with the hand piece, and uh, I find that when I use a surgical burr on my electric hand piece. Uh, it's, it's pushing it a little bit. I can tell it's taxing my electric a little bit. Uh, so I do not use a, a surgical hand piece and I'll do my buckle C cuts, I'll section teeth, I'll take out impacted wisdom teeth with my regular uh, electric hand piece. Um, Midwest E-Series is what I use. And uh, I can tell it's struggle. It, it, it's complaining to me a little bit, but I, I still use it and it, it works great. Um, electric is better than air driven. So you have less chance of an air emboli and, um, it seems to be clean and efficient. All right. Great. I think that actually wraps up our questions for this evening. So great. thank you, Dr. Thank you, doctor, for the excellent information tonight. Um, oh, actually, a few just came in. <laughs> if you're okay with that, they just popped in. Sure. sure. All right. So let's see. We have a question from Crystal who asks, what, do, what, 
What do you think about the head size and weight of the electric versus air driven? I've recently switched from air driven to electric, but it seems to brought down. Maybe I'm pushing too hard. Okay, so to me, the weight, the head size was critical. And once my rep showed me that the head size was the same as what um, I had, that helped sell me on it. Um, and the weight, some of them are heavier and some of them are lighter, but I got one that was, seemed to be lighter. And, uh, that was very important to me to have access to get in there. Occasionally I will have to get an extra short burr or chop a burr off to access the distal of an upper second molar, but I will modify a burr. I know that's not recommended or extra short burr, uh, diamond to get up and access, but you cannot go in there with a with a head size that's too cl too much of a big clunker. I definitely would choose and test my electric handpiece carefully, any handpiece I have, with the demands that we have. Um, especially there's pedo handpieces, there's smaller heads. Uh, you can test those out too. So. All right, and that does officially wrap up our questions for this evening. So thank you, doctor, for the excellent information tonight. And thank you to everyone for attending tonight's webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. We would appreciate your feedback via our survey that will pop up on our screen shortly. We did record tonight's webinar, so we will email the recording out sometime in the next week. And like I mentioned before, that will include the slide. So if you did have an experience of glitch today, um, you'll see the sl slides in real time. Um, and if you're interested in attending future webinars, visit www.henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you, Dr. Tuttle, for your time tonight. We really appreciated it. Thanks. You guys are the best. Go get them. <laughs> have a great night. Thank you.